Okay, so this is something that's kind of long overdue. So I'm actually going to take two Briggs engines and put them together to make one. So the one is a vertical shaft, uh, 18 horsepower opposed twin. And the other one is a horizontal shaft, unknown horsepower uh, opposed twin. So now the cool thing with these engines is... The horizontal shaft and vertical shaft, you can mix up just about all the parts, except for like the external parts. So like the block and all your parts that basically is going to wear out is interchangeable. So I'm actually going to be rebuilding the horizontal and using the vertical shaft for parts. And the cool thing with these is the only thing that's actually different on the block is the dipstick. So the vertical shaft, the dipstick comes out right here on the side. So the engine would be sitting up kind of like that and the dipstick would come up like that towards the top. So you see how it's it's like that on the fan shroud so that ain't gonna work for a horizontal shaft. Now on a horizontal shaft it of course comes out right there which is in a completely different spot. Now the vertical block already has some of them already has a plug put in there like this one, you see that there's a plug right there. All I have to do is unscrew that and that oil dipstick right there will actually fit right in there. And then there's a hole already in there for it. Some of them you actually have to drill that out and actually like put some silicone in there to keep the dipstick from leaking. So what I'm actually gonna do is, cause that block has barely any rust in the cylinders. It only has a little bit of rust on the one side and this one is really rusted on both sides and just really bad. The inside of this one's a lot more disgusting. So since I have that engine and I need parts from it anyway, I'm going to take basically everything from that one and put on here. So I'm going to come back when I get some progress on the teardown. Though. Okay, so more bad things happened. Um, so I tore apart, I guess, first engine. I'll start with this. So the horizontal shaft one, I got it basically as tore apart as I plan on. It is so disgusting inside, I can't even begin with. Um, looked at, you can see right there, that connecting rod is just mangled. Someone ran it without oil. Um, the crankshaft is also no good. So you can see right there where it's all nice and shiny, that's how it's supposed to look. Dang it. And then right here, you can see that is bad. That's not going to work. And I'd, I've tried to fix them before, and it ended up basically blowing up later on. So the plan is now is I took apart the second engine like I was planning on. And since you see how long from that bearing to the end, that it's like five inches or so, it's not very long. And then this one here, it's missing the bearing, so I'll have to pull the bearing off of that one and put on here. But with that bearing, it's still quite a bit longer before it starts getting thin. So that means that this shaft here actually has to get turned down to uh, the same size as this one inch shaft. And then the shaft will have to get cut and basically make this crankshaft into that one. And the other thing I realized that's kind of weird here is these connecting rods are very shiny and so are the pistons. And they look like a very poor quality cast. So I'm thinking it was some reproduction, maybe like rebuild kit somebody got for it. And the only thing that was wrong with this second uh, vertical shaft one is, where is it here? Is this bolt right here, if this camera would focus. This bolt. This bolt was actually wedged inside the valve um not on this side but right i guess it was on this side um it was wedged in the intake valve i guess i can't find now where it is but anyway this was wedged on the intake valve so that's probably why they parked it because it was sitting there with the valve open this is a screw for the air filter so it would go through the carburetor and mount the air filter on. So somebody would drop this screw down in through here 
and then uh, started it. And then as soon as it got started, the screw would have went down into the engine and uh, basically it didn't have any compression on the one side. Um, so I'm going to, what am I going to do? So I'm going to figure out exactly what parts I'm going to use on this engine and what parts I'm just going to put in the scrap pile and then what parts I'm just going to keep for the next one. And then uh, gather it up, get it ready to get cleaned up, and come back and show you what else I've got going Okay, on. so I got most of the parts pretty well cleaned. So that's just the extra block, which is, that's the block where the old uh, horizontal shaft engine came from. And that's the actual style I'm going to be building here. So this was a vertical shaft before, and now it's going to be a horizontal. So this is the bearing that's going to end up going on. The end of the crankshaft, which is actually so to support it. So one thing you want to make sure all the time is that these two dots right here are lined up because that's your timing. On this particular engine, there is all kinds of lines here. So there's this line, there's a little line there, there's a line there, and there. It's like there's four of them. You want to make sure the two dots are lined up and just ignore the lines. I'm not sure what the lines are for, um, so just ignore them. So it had... Since this is a vertical shaft, some of them you actually have to drill that hole out by the dipstick, which is right down there. Um, on this one, I was lucky enough and I didn't have to drill it out. Um, all that was in there was this little plug. You take the little grommet out of your old uh, junk block and you just screw that in there. You take this out, of course, and then this is extra. And that'll screw right in so it didn't have to modify anything to convert the vertical shaft to a horizontal. So next thing for me to do is to clean this up a little bit better. Put this bearing on and then uh, silicone up both the bottom cover and the side cover and put it together. So because of the tractor I'm going to put this in, uh, has just a flat frame where this oil pan goes. It had a little plug like that one sticking out there. I put it on upside down. So you can see it there. And I just siliconed it up really good so hopefully it won't leak. But that stuff on the bottom doesn't come off so I guess it's just going to stay. So I'm going to get this sealed up. I got and the oil pan as well as that side cover uh, siliconed and then put on. I got the muffler put on. Flywheel, starter, ignition coil. Hopefully it works otherwise I'll have to go find another one. Um, spins over and feels like it has pretty good compression, but once as I get uh, oil in here, I'll spin it over and check the compression with my tester and see exactly how much it has, make sure everything actually works. And then put it in the tractor. I have the carburetor soaking right now, so I'm going to get some more stuff put on and come back. So I got all the shrouds and stuff put on, the carburetor and everything. The carburetor seems to be nice on the inside now so hopefully it it'll run as good as it looks I got it, the engine put in my Roper 16T that's supposed to have a 16 horse of this engine but the way these engines are built all of them are the exactly the same thing where I could basically peel this 18 horse sticker off and slap a 16 horse sticker on it and be the same thing so they just made a different the same engine they just put a different sticker on it to make a different horsepower all the way from 16 horse to like 22 or something like that. It's just the same engine. Maybe they just tuned the carburetor different. But this has parts from a, a 16 and an 18 in it. And they're both the same. And I've mixed up parts from 16 horses to 18s and a 19.5. And they're all the same. Um, so next thing for me to do is to put some oil in it. And then uh, rig up something for gas, so just in case for some reason it don't run. And then uh, start it up, so next time I come back, it'll probably... Okay, so I've got all the wiring done. I got the fuel line hooked up. The engine actually runs. It runs actually pretty good. Smokes a little bit like they all do, but it actually runs pretty good. Um, just got this ground down, started it up, and then ran a grinder across here to uh, get that. It used to be that size. Uh, because this is a vertical shaft, it used to have a bigger oil pan. And then uh, since this is now a horizontal shaft, this had to get cut down. So what's going to happen is this pulley will fit right on top of it. Kind of like that. It's kind of tight, but it will go on. And then I have this contraption of one washer 
another washer, one that I dropped on the ground, and then this gigantic nut, and then a bolt with another washer on it that I also dropped to go on the end, kind of like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an impact on here and tighten this thing down and it will not come off unless I take it back off. So I'm gonna get that done. I gotta adjust the clutch because of the belt is a different spot than it was before. Put a hood on here and then come back to you when it says it's up. So there you go, it runs really good. It took me a very, very long time to get this governor adjusted just right. Cause as uh, soon as I would think that I got it just right, I would rev the throttle up and it would just keep on going. And you put it back to idle and it just keeps revving at 8,000 RPM or whatever. So good thing the key switch didn't fail. <laughs> Otherwise I'd be back where I started. Um, I had to get that screw right right there adjusted just right so you gotta loosen that nut up get that screw there adjusted just right because it uses the oil pressure of the engine to push the throttle back down so it doesn't rev sky high um so it took forever to do um doesn't seem like it burns any oil it was smoking a ton before but it quit so i think i think there's a bunch of crud in this muffler and it was steaming before kind of on the outside of the muffler. So I'm thinking it had a bunch of crud in there. I got a belt guide put on because otherwise the belt was going to fall off. So I did that. The pulley cover won't fit because of the way I have uh, this bolt in the end with this washer set up. So yeah, um, that is how it runs, I guess. And uh, here are some pictures and a few videos of this tractor back in 2017 when I got it. Thanks for watching.